Hello there everyone, I'm Mr. Mocha Lover, and thank you for joining me here at the start of a new campaign in TNO, in which we're playing as, well, Gomi, or I guess, yeah, just Gomi, led by Boris Ponomaryov, which is kind of weird, but we've already had our little revolutions and stuff, but we needed to do the trial of the counter-revolutionaries. They woke up with uh, bags around their heads and their hands tied with rope, while they followed the tight grasp of somebody escorting them and then forcing them to their knees. Elena and Yevgeny breathed heavily as other people were forced to sit around them. The crackle flames were present around them. What exactly happened? Their heads hurt, their hands were weary, and they felt that something was incredibly, incredibly amiss. With the motion of one of the commissars, all bags were removed. Ye Elena and Yevgeny looked around them, seeing fellow members of the center, tied up, with them, tied up with them as prisoners. Communist partisans and soldiers were armed, rounding up members of the democratic opposition. Listen closely. Everyone here is considered a traitor to the Komi Provisional Soviet. You will now be tried against the People's Commissariat for Crimes Against a Glorious Revolution. How do you plead? Not guilty, Elena and Yevgeny shouted in unison. Deep down, they held on to some youthful hope that they had a chance, however. As the trial went on, as the commissar spoke, and as several assemblymen were taken away around them, it became clear that this was a show trial. This was the end. Meaningless words, piercing the defenses like tank shells, rallying the super-partisan council of judges assembled against them. They would certainly meet their deaths. However, the communists decided to do it, however, was that what was occupied their minds. What are you going to do to us? We did nothing wrong. Guilty. Let them hang alongside the collaborationist brethren. Despite their cries, despite their physical resistance, this was the end. Elena and Yevgeny, with the strike of a gavel, now had their necks rotted around a noose. They had failed, despite all their promises, their work would never be for naught. With a simple collapse of a platform, tears escaped Yevgeny's eyes. Elena remained silent. Both of them composed themselves with this final exhale, before their lives were taken from them as swiftly as a door below, f or the floor below, them dropped. The revolution is eternal, but at what cost? The revolution secured. Despite the efforts of the reactionaries, communism and Comey survived. We managed to weather the coups and counter coups, survive deception, and even seize power. With the stabilization of Komi, the time has come to look outwards. For, for too long, Russia has remained divided, split between count countless warlords. We will end this chaos and anarchy by first bringing the warlords in our region to heal, then the ones in the west of Russia, or the rest of Russia. The reactionaries throughout the Russia may think the flame of revolution extinguished, but they are wrong, for it's only just begun. Oops, I was supposed to cancel them, but it didn't really matter. Thank you, to establish a true army. The bombing stop. If you don't about that one, please go right ahead. And it looks like, oh, well, Germany is having maybe a civil war, but guns! During the chaos in Komi, we were forced to lean on our militias and the elements of the Republican army that were so loyal to us, however. Even though, now that we control the military, the fact of the matter is that, uh, that the military is defensive in nature. To embark on a grand campaign to unify Russia now with the current military would only lead to failure. Therefore, it is clear that we must revamp and reform the military into the Komi Red Army, so that it can not only defend us from threats, but also help us push aggressively against our enemies and unify Russia. The remnants of the opposition. Uh, let's see... If you want to read about this one, please go ahead, because some of these I've already read before, especially for like the generic ones from the Komi Republic. I've definitely read them before. Um, it, I don't really care too much about this stuff, so let's just go and do all this stuff. We get our political power back eventually. Also, I guess Serov has been killed off already. It's fine, whatever. Um, and I think, I have I played as Bukharan before? I don't remember. I honestly can't remember who I played as. I know I've not done Seslav or Zedon Evite, but as you can tell, who's on the thumbnail? Well, we'll see what happens. Also, yeah, we did actually really well with Legitimus here. I really try to boost up a lot of Zidanev uh, influence here. And there we go. Hmm. Hmm. Decrease the influence of Mikhail Soslov. Hmm. Zidanev. Hmm. We seem to be doing okay for now, so we can probably just keep it there for now. Reliable Commissars, we lose political power, which does suck. Uh, training. Uh, yeah, this one. Begin the rebuilding. After so many years, the German bombs have finally stopped falling. Well, we weren't able to immediately begin rebuilding due to the chaos that enveloped Komi. The town's going to fully utilize all the resources Komi has to offer. We can begin the paving of more roads to reach even deeply rural lands. Furthermore, we can rebuild the train stations and railroads and use them without the expectation that they'll be destroyed in a matter of weeks, allowing us to transport more resources across Komi at a quicker rate. While one could argue there are many new options open to us, an infrastructure drive is the most pressing matter to complete, as a country is nothing without infrastructure. You get one city and four uh, infrastructure. Not bad. Not great, but not bad. Uh, unearth the caches. Yeah, we definitely don't need that. When the front collapsed and the German bombing increased, a decision was made to hide a large amount of weaponry away so that a stray bomber too would not leave Komi before after weaponry. Now the bombing's over, we can begin the process of opening up the caches. Some of the equipment may have been destroyed or stolen, but the majority of the caches that we've opened up still have functioning weapons. The access to new equipment will allow us to continue the process of upgrading the army, allowing us to be more ready to begin the process of reunification. And they're still looting, so first off. Um, if you want to read about these ones, please go ahead. Shafarovich dreamed of numbers. Opposition data. Report concludes. Report concludes. Concludes. And no second chances. Chaos of a different kind. And this one too. Nice. So, launch operation gets these guys. Might as well. Cool. And begin the rebuilding under the caches. Um, we're trying to build another division here. Um, 
Yeah, we're doing the best we can. It's not very great. Uh, yeah, this, our starting position is always pretty god awful, I would say. See, Shverevich fled the country as well as Stalino. But some other people are still posing a lot of resistance to us, which sucks, but whatever. Hope we can stand up against the WRF. That'd be. That'd be good. If we actually could, so. Uh, Soviet training. While we've done our best to train the new army, the undeniable truth is that we're not up to par. Many other warlords have been able to lean on training schools and various generals in order to maintain a more professional standard. In order to rectify the situation, a decision has been made to utilize the old Soviet training schools to help rectify the deficiencies of our army. It may take time for the results to be truly felt, but it's a necessary decision. As the army requires modernization and proper training to make it a force strong enough to unify Russia. Happy are the persecuted. That oh, actually, you know what, if you want to read that one, please go ahead. I'm passionately hidden. One cigarette can't hurt. He will choke us no more. And after prison or worse. Apologies that I'm not reading those. I mean, I think I've read. I think I've read through them before, but eh. so everyone's done. We don't even need to do that anymore. Down here, anything else? No, not really. Reliable commissars. While we are in no danger of a counter coup, the fact remains that Comey isn't exactly the most stable of places. Furthermore, we cannot really rely on a large number of the politically educated officers due to the fact that many of them were educated against communist ideals. We must begin building a cadre of new political officers, ones that are fully trustworthy in order to not only prevent an ideological schism between the government and the army, but also so that we can maintain control and stability here in Comey by preventing the army from maintaining its sympathies to our enemies. Um, Vologda. And we're actually already ready to go against these guys, so that's good. I was trying to get more artillery because I love, love, love arty. Lots and lots of arty. The road out Kongolsk. Out of all the warlords of Western Russia, the Rus Russian Revolutionary Front is one of the few that could be considered an ally. While the WRRF is ruled by the military, as compared to our civilian rule, it is still a believer in the ideals of communism. In order to take advantage of this possible alliance, we should send an envoy to the WRRF in an attempt to open up relations. There are fears that the Front may see us an enemy, as Komi did technically split from it after the West Russian War, but the Front luckily needs an ally in Western Russia as much as we do. Cooperation with the Front will surely see us a victory. Well, we hope so, but kind of doubt it. Let's go and see what we can do. Our guys aren't looking too bad, they're just not looking great. Oh, they pay the tribute, thank you! Thank you for paying the tribute, we appreciate it. Now, we can't do a pack with the front because Grigory Zukov has to delete it, so if you want to read about that, please go ahead. Unequal ally, sharing training exercises, marches one. So I'll probably do an icy reception. Bunkers of the north, spread confusion. Watch our rear. It seems for some bizarre reason that the WRF has rejected our efforts to begin a cooperation with them, and they sent our envoy home. Due to this, we have no choice but to assume that the front is a hostile force, adding one more enemy that must be conquered in order to reunite Russia. It's likely that the front considers us traitors due to Comey's separation from them after the West Russian War. In any case, it doesn't matter. While the loss of the front as a potential ally is big, it's not deadly. We must take efforts to ensure that if the front is to invade, that it is us who will come out on top, not these traitors of solidarity. And bunkers to the north spread uh, confusion. The WRRF, uh, despite its opposition to us, is still ideologically backed by the ideas of communism. Therefore, it is highly likely that there are many in the front who are opposed to the opposition towards Comey. We must capitalize on this by spreading propaganda throughout the front, secretly, about how it has betrayed the revolution in its darkest hour by turning against a government led by a Communist Party. Furthermore, we must sabotage the infrastructure and minds of the front in order to weaken them. This dual pronged effort of spreading confusion shall hopefully lead to the front becoming more divided, preventing them from attacking us and making a campaign against them easier. Which would be very nice. I'll be honest, that would be very, very nice. What else can we do? Because we got a lot of political power. We could buy equipment, but I don't like doing that. I really don't. Uh, make sure. Who? Oh, the elite, huh? It's not bad, but still. Alright, not bad. And then Bunkers of the North. While it would be nice to assume that the front will be passive, it's highly likely that they are mobilizing in an effort to reunify Russia under their own banner. As we border them, it is hi therefore highly likely that we will be one of the one of, if not the first target of the front. We need to ensure that our northern border can withstand an attack long enough for us to mobilize the majority of our forces. The best way to ensure this is by building bunker complexes all along the Sisalola, or Sisala. The creation of these bunkers should allow us a, suit a suitable defense in case of a conflict, allowing us to protect Komi from the splitters to the north. Nice. Watching our rear. While we can't array all of our forces in defense against the WRF, 
Uh, it would be remiss to leave our border with them completely undefended. Our recent bunker building efforts have allowed our de defensive capabilities to increase, but it's obvious that we must do more. Patrols will be increased uh, across the Sisola, and will show increased observation efforts so that our rear is secured. This increased presence should hopefully deter the front from attacking even if they are to attack. Our even greater defenses should prevent them from gaining any significant ground and inflict a large amount of casualties. Well, you'd hope so. Keep beating the crap out of them. Do we have any arty? We don't have a lot. We do have quite a few guns, which is actually pretty darn nice. We don't have a lot of things, but we got some things. There we go. Watch the rear, because we like watching rears here. Wipe the site clean. Ever since the West Russian War, Russia has been polluted with countless petty warlords, all proclaiming themselves to be the true savior. No more. The time has come to bring this age of warlordism to an end. And restore the red banner of communism. We must begin to move against the local warlords, bringing them under our rule. Plans must be organized, troops must be moved, and bureaucracy must be ready to help and integrate the new territories. As there may be very well some resistance to our rule. It may be very well a long time struggle before we are able to complete reunification, but we do not. Russia may very well be left in this anarchy for eternity, which would truly be a tragedy. Watch that big old rear we got. Nice. Uh, let's see, the monk's in our sight. Good and Republic, Republic, well, Lagda. Uh, I mean, we need to do this stuff on the right side too, but whatever. Against the Tsarists, build the line, rally south. Monk's in our sight, I would like to get them done as fast as possible so we can core them. The monk's in our sights. One of the first targets identified by our generals as the Order of St. George. These fanta fanatical monks rule a fairly small amount of land, and are backed by any of the warlord militarily. As this will be a forward offensive, we must ensure that the army is ready for such a task. Troops shall be moved into position, but more importantly, we must educate the soldiers of the monks' fanaticism. We must make sure that they understand the flaws of the monks' beliefs, and just how far they can go in order to make sure that we lose. Our briefings will allow the soldiers to be able to quickly snuff out any pockets of resistance that may exist, as they will understand the madness of the monks. What a bunch of crazy dudes! Bunch of crazies. Good God, we need more manpower. This sucks. Huh. March on the monasteries. The time is coming to attack the Order of St. George and secure a right flank. Our generals expect the campaign to be short and not too difficult as the Order is a fairly small warlord and our army is grossly superior to theirs. In any case, let's push onward for we reunite Russia. Nice. Yeah, we were pretty much already good to war those guys. I'm worried about the WRF, though. It's going to suck so much. But if we can move fast enough and core this as fast enough as possible, that'd be good. I do like the extra defense. Uh, we only get... Oh my goodness, that's so bad. Nice. Caesar Reef. Well... After that one, we'll probably go and do one of these on top. Secure the party. While well, our party maintains a unified, unified and organized front for the rest of the world, internally the party is a mess. Competing sub ideologies, infighting, and a general lack of cohesion threatens the very foundation of our state. The members of a party should be made to realize who's in charge and how our party is going to be run on from now on. All party members are going to have to be brought under the same page regarding goals, ambitions, and public relations. Our party will be made into a single unified front under the general secretary's leadership. Pretty much. Yeah, I don't know if I can actually beat these guys up like that. So, yeah, we're not going to do that yet. Well, I it, though. Yeah, but we're going to go to war, so it's probably best to wait. I already have enough loot right now anyway, so... Yeah, as you can tell, like, poverty, we're actually improving it already, which is looking pretty good. Looking pretty darn good, not going to lie. And there goes good old Tricky Dick. Let's kill the potty. Matter of unity. Well, let's go both reclaim our sister republic. And Comey had a sister, Vologda would be it. Both republics have attempted to be something approaching neutral. And Comey and Vologda relations have never been, never been horrible. Now that we've begun our efforts to reunite Russia, it's critical that we attempt to reclaim Vologda in some way. It is certainly possible, given daft, or daft negotiations, that we could peacefully integrate Vologda, but a peaceful integration requires both sides to be willing to integrate, something that the Vologdan government may not be willing to do. We must prepare to, in some form, annex Vologda. 
Over, not too bad. Yay! Don't mind that we just kept beating the crap out of you. Oh, I see. Direction of the party. The revolution has succeeded, and now communism can be established in Komi, of course. It must now be determined how to establish communism. And so Slav Zidanov and Bukharina have all different ideas on how to do it. Three low-level low, low level politicians are discussing this very question over lunch. Honestly, I think Zidane's got vision. His passion could serve the future of the party well as what I think. Soslav's kind of creepy, you know, and Sergei bit between bits of his butt sandwich. Sergei, Soslav is as well. You orchestrated a revolution. Why risk it on some intellectual? Have you heard some of the things that Zidanov has suggested? It sounds like a total nut job, exclaimed Maxim. Maxim, you bullocker. If Kaganovich were leading this party, you would follow him. Soslav's way too controlling. We should go with a more sensible option, like Bukharina. She cares about the people in the revolution. She's a natural choice, replied Alexei. Yeah, right. Bukharin's girls probably destroy Russia a second time if we let her take charge. She. The end of their lunch break cut off Sergei's comment. The three politicians inside packed up their barely eaten lunches and headed back to work. We were out of earthshot during all that, right? Uh, you know what? I'll give you credit to that if it comes down to it. Oh, well, my finger slipped. Um, I don't like that these guys are already killing these guys off, so. Uh. This is probably going to cancel. These guys are probably going to die. If that's the case, I just not even do that one. Against the terrorists. The collapse of the WRF has brought many warlords to power. Many claim to be the true Russia. One of the most egregious warlords of them is Vyaka. The Tsars seek nothing but the reimplementation of monarchism, the system that crumbled under its own way back in 1917. The Vyakans are directly to our south, which means that they are undoubtedly the biggest threat as of right now to Komi. We cannot afford to let this menace, menace fester on our border, or else we risk our destruction by those reactionaries. We must seek to exorcise those Tsars from Russia once and for all so that we can finally be free of the specter of monarchism. Build the line. Oh, see the wealth. We want to see the wealth too. As we expect, the Gaini monks had managed to acquire quite a bit of uh, religious paraphernalia. However, we do not expect that the value of said paraphernalia to be this high. This is a huge amount of rare and valuable resources, such as gold, stashed away in places where the monks hoped we never look. Sadly for them, however. Some of the people we captured were all too willing to show us where these valuable items were. The wealth will be very useful in funding our efforts to reclaim Russia. We can even use some of the wealth to help refill the treasury. While there might be some more of the religious people mad about Alpha selling us church property, the fact of the matter is that this money goes to just cause the reunification of Russia. Oh, yep, there goes those guys. Hadrius is still alive. Goring versus Borman. Pretty much. Pretty much. Patricia preparations. The Vyaka army is one of the most powerful in West Russia, and a war against them risks the possibility of evolving into a long and bloody struggle. If this is to happen, we do not want our troops to starve, as is how one loses the war. To prevent this outcome from occurring, we must begin to talk about supplies. Armors will be expanded and food will be preserved to the best of our ability, so that our army can survive a protracted war. We will also make sure that our soldiers have access to adequate clothing, depending on the climate. Even if the war with Vyaka lasts a long time, our efforts are sure they will come out on top. Well, we hope to. We really hope to. Nice. We have no anti-tank though. We got plenty, we have more than enough guns. Oh my goodness, we need some anti-tank. Alrighty. Ready to the south, 2nd October. We got build a line. A war with the Vyaka will be anything but easy. It is likely that it will take some time for us to fully breach their lines, and therefore we must construct defenses of our own. We must begin to construct fortifications along the banks of the Vyaka River, so that even if we're not able to immediately storm the Tsar's lines, we'll have a backup plan that will allow us to hold against their armies. This offensive line should include trenches, bunkers, and observation outposts. Everything we need to defend against Vyaka if need be. However, this line of defense, while comprehensive, will not be maximized to its fullest potential, as we need the resources to contribute to the war itself, not just defensive natures or defensive structures. Oh, we can just go to the war. Let's go. 2nd October. Oh, hello. Uh, all of our efforts in preparing that have succeeded. And the time to begin the war against the Tsarists has arrived. We will not allow monarchism to once again take root in Russia. Our troops will cross the Vyaka River and begin the war against Vyaka. Just as our comrades did in 1917, we will strike down the Tsar from the throne. Nice. This one. Oh, if you want to build that, please go ahead. Oh, not this one. There you go. Ready to the south. In order to launch a successful campaign against Vyatka, we need to ensure that we are ready for war. To end this, we, to this end, 
We must begin a mobilization effort focused on the South Akomi, so that we have enough troops to actually fight the Tsarists. So we will ensure that our troops are able to get into position for this war. Furthermore, we'll send our enemy engineers to the Vyaka River in order to find the best location to cross it. Our drones have determined that crossing and securing the Vyaka River will be critical priority early in the war, so to improvise the river crossing would be deadly to our war effort. We must be ready to strike down the Tsarists. Yeah, I'll be honest here, because this is looking so bad, I might have to use console commands for this. Like, at this point, I don't really care. We'll see. Because that looks ridiculously difficult to fight. Huh. Well, that takes forever to get to, huh? Peaceful option, well, obviously we can't do that anymore. Man, come on. Make a division. I know we'd be spending a lot of equipment here, but still. Where's the Mercus of Anti-Tank finally? The white flag's on the border. Oh, crap. Yeah, honestly, I'm probably just gonna use cons commands. I really do not fight, feel like fighting this stupid war here, so. Um, if you want to read about this one, please go ahead. What divisions they got? No manpower. Maybe 12 is quite a bit. Wait, hold on. Ooh, I'm glad we canceled that one. Uh, uh. A matter of unity? Maintaining unity within the parties of the utmost importance. It was the weakness of Bukharan's Communist Party that only led to this downfall. If we had been a stronger leader and kept the party together, we may have even won. Keeping party unity within the party is vital for keeping the political system functioning, a necessary component of Lenin's ideology. We must endeavor to further solidify our power base within the party and ensure our continued political hegemony. The party will be kept unified at all costs. Yeah, I mean, I don't like this. The final warning, if you want to that, please go ahead. Orthodox front. Oh, the storm breaks. If you remember that, please go ahead. Boom. Um. I'm sure some people will only do both sides. I want to go like an Orthodox front first. Even though the weak leadership of the Bukharin, the Soviet Union thrived in the 20s and 30s. Industry was built, farms thrived, and peace was high. All through the guidance of a superior Marxist Leninist ideology. It was Bukharin's indifference to the strict ideological adherence and Lenin's ideas of constructing a grand army to protect the Soviet Union that led to her defeat. This time will be different, however. The Republic is to remain staunchly orthodox uh, Marxist Leninist under the uncompromising rule of the party. I mean, for right now, we'll give this a good old Rambler try, but because they have so many divisions and we literally have like no manpower, this is going to be a pain in the butt. Yeah, up to 11 divisions, yeah, I'll be honest, I don't really feel like fighting this for then. <laughs> like, holy crap, that's insane. Yeah, I'll be honest, this is stupid, and I think this really needs to get looked at again. But the master is Suslov. Suslov is the obvious choice to so be the general secretary of the Republic. His expert political maneuvering, strict guiding hand, and adept diplomacy are exactly what we need to keep the party in line and politically consistent. Additionally, Seslov had years of experience in the party, and is easily one of the most foremost senior members. That experience in handling matters of state and diplomacy, both within the nation and without, will be necessary in the coming years. He should be the one to take the lead in our political system and guide the nation into the future. Run. There you go. Kill him off if you can. This isn't too bad, but still. Hmm. 
god awful mess this is. Alright, up the games, and boom. Seriously? Just trying to cut down the number of divisions they have is ridiculous. Yeah, the WRF is just unfair to fight against. It's completely unfair for anyone else here. Uh, advocate collect rule. Uh, state of being headed by a single person with a strong power base, nothing but the seeds of a personality cult, and unsocialist. A social state must be ruled collectively by the party with the head of the state only acting as a guiding figure. Do you do so otherwise it invite tragedy? As we discovered so many years ago during the rule of the incumbent of Bukharin, what good has ever come of such a dictatorial rule? It's only brought pain and suffering upon Germany and Japan, and whose empires creak and groan under their enormous weight. Eh, yeah, followed up with what? Step into the light. Uh, the Boris has come. The moment has come. <laughs> the Boris. Uh. The title of General Secretary of the newly christened Communist Autonomous Soviet Socialist Republic will go to Mikhail Seslov. He, whose many years of service to the Communist Party and vast experience in the political system have more than earned him the position, will finally be stepping into the public eye. His stage will be that of the entirety of the nation, coming with all the benefits and challenges that will present him. Regardless of what he does and the position where he goes with it, it is assured that a new chapter is beginning in Comey. Can you go in? Thatch Mama. What a region we can find and kill immediately is probably always a good idea. Well, I generally still find this to be a complete god-awful pain in the butt. Like, we're doing actually a lot better than I thought we would, but still. I hate fighting the WRF so much. Nice. Anything here yet? Anything here? No. Another, at least the motorized division was absolutely destroyed. Please do not get encircled yourself. Please do not get encircled yourself. Please, please, for the love of God, please do not get encircled. Uh, do some light and light attack. Get some more output if we possibly can. And some, uh, industry, stuff like that. I'll go up here. The evaluation party policy. A key moment has arrived in the party's history. The key... The party's yearly evaluation has arrived. Historically, the party's evaluation has either been a bill weather, bellwether of change or an early sign of the continuing reign of orthodoxy. With Bukharina on the rise and the reformists ascending in the party's hierarchy, it may be seem to be a certain victory for the reformists, but the orthodox evaluators still dominate much of the party's organs. Certainly many of Bukharina's methods have proved effective. But the old guard watches carefully for signs of instability or progress has gone too far. The question remains, shall orthodoxy take hold once again or will the reformists take ascendancy? Well, where are we at? Unrest in the party... We gotta go with the Slavite influence. Taking control. Boris, pull the money off. As I know today that he'll be stepping down from the position as head of state, he has assured the public that he is merely holding that role in a temporary capacity until a more suitable candidate was selected. To the surprise of very few, Ponomaryov has transferred the disposition of power to his mentor, Mikhail Seslov, in what possibly a predefined arrangement, or even a matter of quid pro quo. Seslov's first act was to appoint Ponomaryov as his premier. As long as they don't switch around again. Wow, the red eminence. You get plus 25% more political power? Holy crap. Oh, we lost our capital. God dang it. Do not lose their capital now. You're going to have to force the attack.
Come on, break through. These guys will die, these guys will die, these guys will all have to die. Yeah, I mean, I said this was god-awful, and I still don't like it, but it's not that. It's not as bad. I mean, we've actually been able to do relatively okay here, which I'm actually so pleased with, actually. Um, Mikun? Ah, oh, that's where you went, huh? Going in and around. Delete those enemy divisions. Go, 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 go. Very nice job. Climb down on revisionism. It seems as if every few years a new challenge is emerging against orthodoxy, and every few years without fail we defeat these revisionists. The newest threat that has emerged from its challenge posed by Bukharina, Zidanev, and the gang of reformists. They're dangerously out of line and may be conspiring to seize party organs as we speak. If we don't take proper action, the dangerous ideals will surely grow to an unimaginable popularity. Clamping down is not the ex ex expedient option, but the morally right choice. Only by silencing unnecessary dissent and enforcing democratic centralism will the party and the republic achieve our goals. The Assembly. Ah, the Assembly of the Communist Party of the Komi Republic is in session. May delegates who wish to be s to set the agenda of today's Congress please rise. And like clockwork, the big three are rising. Already the Speaker can tell what the topic will be for the Komi Republic's leftists. I have only really discussed one topic in a hundred variations to split with the Union. Who will take the reins of power now that the left is in control? What, uh... Can the Komi Republic do, surrounded as it is by fragments of the socialist dream, and the tyranny of generals who beat the people with its shards? Is there really any purpose of fighting the revolution in a place that seems to become numb to it? It is only a real, really one question, the question of all oh, who have their lives work torn from under them. Who next, and what then? What is, in other words, to be done? The inaugural opening speech is a good uh, platform to advance the agenda as any, even if the speaker has no real hope of that this shouting match will turn out differently from others, even so. It is her formal duty to ensure that the decorum is at least kept attempt is at least attempted, and now she must make a choice. She calls on the speakers to state their points. Zidane, patient as ever, raises the topic of developing ideological consciousness. Lukewarm, boring, but a solid opener of the day's events. Bukharina points out that ideological con consciousness will not be relevant for very long unless the workers experience a said ideology's benefits and proposes instead a discussion of workplace democracy in the Republic. General Secretary Sefslov, in his usual dry manner, proposes the merger of the two topics, the centralization of workplace unions to the party mandate. It is subtle, controlling, and depressing, depressingly relevant. I, I originally wanted to do Zidana, but oh well. I don't know how we managed to kill off so many enemy divisions here, but you know what? We did it. We literally did it. No issues. Well, maybe some. Do we have manpower? Oh crap! I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna fight Vyak at the same time. I'm sorry. I I absolutely refuse to. I am absolutely not sorry about that whatsoever. I refuse to do that. I do not care about being fair about this. Then, if we have to fight Vyak at the same time, I'm not gonna do that. I swear, I will not do that. That's not fun. Go to Wasamara, not us. Morons, jeez. How are you both losing? Oh, only one of you is losing. Ah, the weaker one's losing, huh? Nice. No, oh, you moron, go that direction. There you go, now I do that. Look at that too, go up there. That's such crap that we have to fight Vyak at the same time. Ah, uh, expel the revisions. The revisions have gone too far. Bukharina and Zidana will destroy the party and the democratic foundation of the Republic. When factionalists interrupt the march of the party, the dreams of the forebears are destroyed. It is of tantamount importance that in these desperate times we adopt desperate measures. We look about Bukharina, Zidana, and their thuggish gangs from the party. Once they have been disposed of, we may call new elections. This time, so-called reformers will not be allowed to interrupt the proceedings of the Supreme Soviet. Only those who desire the creation of a true Soviet a socialist and communist state will be allowed to hold such an esteemed position of power. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not doing that. I'm sorry, but no. You die. Let's go here. You are going to win and beat them up. No questions asked. Go, 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 go. the revisionists, and we'll do ready the south. 
which I think I read before, but notices of expulsion. Soslav always hangs back after the party meetings. He's never found it particularly efficient to address important matters within other people have the floor. No, far better to channel history rather than shape it, to block its course with a whisper here, to nudge it with silence there, until the parts have changed so irreversibly that the sum is now uniquely different from what it would have been. The slow evolution of history, not particularly Marxist, but agreeably subtle. The clique are waiting for them, as they always are, despite his more stimulating discussions with the rest of the theorists within the Communist Party. He vastly prefers the company of men and women. Great face, gray suited, effectively faceless. The very definition of the party's suit. And yet they speak the language of power, so Slav's only tongue as well as he does. It is power now that the clique gathers to speak. Talk is brief, and to the point, there have been an anomalous number of intrusions on what could be said, and what would surely be said had the majority been properly guided by its betters, by people who seem less than interested in the party line. Indeed, these people seem altogether interested in taking democracy out of democratic centralism on usurping the party for their own functions, and who can trust an owner in these untrying times? Soslav nods. It's time to move past the rhetoric to the only thing that matters, his proposes, and the tones of a bored schoolmaster resolving a playground dispute, a suspension to the certain members of the party, including the esteemed Bukharina and Zidano. A suspension that, of course, will be temporary and is intended entirely for their own benefit and that of the body politic. Soslav kept his lights, his lips tightly shut, but he cannot suppress a twitch in his cheek, not particularly Marxism nor even subtle, but it has worked. Your move, friends, your move. Either win or die. Win or die. And end of the vision. Zidane. Chuckling over a glass of home brewed tea. Uh, animated, animatedly describes his extremely convoluted brewing process to his latest guests. They smile and nod encouragingly. And one of the factory men begins describing his own recipe for what he calls ice brew, a tea that supposedly acts twice as potent as a normal brew with the use of condensation. He's in the middle of describing the terribly convoluted process when the party page boy arrives. A couple of whistler, whispers and Zidanov excuses himself. With an apologetic shrug, as he co-signs the party documents, he asks if the boys heard anything from the central. That snake Seslov has been suspiciously quiet these past couple weeks. And snakes rarely stay quiet unless they're planning on an experience expedient dinner. The boy only casts him a confused stare in reply. He sighs and returns the form, slipping with the boy a sweet sugar sweet from a well-meaning guest. He doesn't take his sweet tea these days. More, of the, more is a pity. When the guests have left, they don't have tours of this teacup as he thinks about the guest's political potential. Perhaps they had little on their mind besides the usual concerns of semi-evolved unionists, but with a little training, who knows what it could be capable of. On that optimistic note, he opens the letter. Disbelief gave away to anger, and then to cold understanding, Zidana picks up the phone to call the party HQ, but on their end there's nothing, not even a respondent to field calls. In Huff, he marches to the door and to be met by the measured tones of Seslov himself. Seslov stares through his mystic glasses, his eyes cold, his face closeted, and a triumph in his voice, unmistakably at last. Comrade Zidana, your suspension is final. So now what do we do? Okay, so, okay, thank god, they actually didn't go to war with us, that's weird, but... You know what, I'm pretty sure they would have gone to war with us. Why did they get to core this up immediately? That makes no sense. A professional courtesy. Svetlana Bukharina. I was less than enthused about receiving letters so early in the morning and outside her official party post, too. How utterly undignified. She fumes as she received the call for official documentation. By their internal code of conduct, she is required to immediately attend to a pressing business for entirely understandable reasons. Revolutions, after all, do not wait for the homesick, even so. Bukharina remains in an indistinct mood. As she retrieves it from the party functionary, who salutes sw stiffly as she co-signs the documentation. She weighs it aside, tosses the boy a dollar for his efforts, and walks back into her house. The wind is chill tonight. Perhaps a little movement of the blinds will be in order. As she enters the room, the familiar clang of the ringing phones begins, but upon entering, Bukharina hears nothing but dead air. After ten uncomfortable seconds, the connection is cut. Confused and worried, she makes a note to dial up Medvedev, and the rest to check if harassment against politicians is ongoing. Perhaps a reactionary passionary cell, in any event. She has more pressing matters to deal with than a few agitators. She opens the envelope sealed with party wax seal, leafing through the brief dossier. Then there is a cold, cold silence of Siktivkar, and in her house and in the heart where dreams of a red star once arose, it is with regret that I declare you suspended, Svetlana Bukharina. I wish it could have been any close any other way, but for the party to be secure, we must cast you out of your ranks. The letters go signed in a trembling hand. Yay. You're not done. You are literally not done. Either win or die there. Oh, oh do they force deploy soldiers? We lost 16,000. Is this is ridiculous. Trying to capitulate these guys is stupid. It's so stupid. But a reliable central committee. The Presidium is secure from splitters. No longer do revisions offer heretical proposals that spit in the face of Marx and Lenin. Before the Presidium moves forward and forgets the memory of these upstarts, we should begin introducing motions to ensure that the matters of the Presidium remain smooth and uninterrupted, uninterrupted, and prevent the introduction of anyone who would seek to corrupt our workers' movement. Not all will be happy setting into stone what we already de facto bans on reformers, but it is far the good of the party. The Presidium, and the workers, and the Republic, a semblance of order will be restored to our highest legislative body.
Dude to the church is nice. Win or die. Those are your, literally your only two options. Win or die. Oh my god. This is stupid. I, I'm going to be up for an honest. If we can take Arkhangelsk, Mezin, uh, several Vinks, Boroshilovsky, as well as Vologda, that should be more than enough to capitulate the WRF. I hate the WRF so much. It's so annoying to try to fight and kill off. So stupid. They just made it make it unbelievably... Oh, just not fun taking these guys out. It's just not fun. And we're doing it completely legit, too. So, like, this is stupid. This is stupidly difficult. I always hate fighting Comey. I hate it, hate it, hate it, hate it. Well, we're playing as Comey. I hate fighting those guys. Um, These guys, I don't think we're good enough yet to fight these guys. Eh, they're looking pretty okay. I'm going to kill Fiaka. Screw Fiaka. You give us that type of panic? Actually, no. Samara's going to be even worse. Right? 8 to 12? Or, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Samara's got to die. But we can't do that, though. Huh. God dang it. That's... I don't... I really just do not like the order in this in these focus trees. Especially for Comey. Because you should be able to go to war with whoever you think you should be able to go to war with first. Like, obviously, the stuff on the right side makes sense. Makes sense. We should do that stuff. But. But. Like. Why? Why can't I go to war with Samara? That doesn't make any sense at all. Look at this handsome guy. 2nd October. If you want to read this again, please go right ahead. Oh, no, no, Hadrish. Hopefully, this does give us a few more weeks. Of, oh, my gosh. Two months of coral, that stuff. Oh, my goodness. That's going to be so bad. Sorry that I'm complaining a lot. It's just like, there's some things that I just need to get changed in TNO that I don't like. Such as not being able to go to war with whoever you want to go to war with in a stage like this. It just makes sense. But if you want to read about a peaceful option, please go right ahead. And there goes Borman. Oopsie. What's going on? There you go. And welcome comrades as well. We're going to about neutrality. And this one, please go ahead as well, but starting our territory. Uh, yeah, that's not bad. Refined at last. Oh, more political power. There is no doubt that when the Marx imagined the foundations of a true worker state, he envisioned a state not dissimilar to our own. There is no doubt that when Lenin envisioned the vanguard party of a social state, he imagined something not dissimilar to our own party. However, it will be a disservice to Lenin to assume that Marxist Leninism was the final evolution of socialist thought. Work done by our most esteemed political scientists and workers' representatives have refined Marxist Leninism and clarified it to the state can follow it without a doubt of where to go next. By defenstration, defenstrating splitters, revisions, and the scum that call themselves reformists. No more mavericks, no more opposition. The party can now boldly move forward with a great scientific order. The officers of the Revolutionary Front. Uh, with the reclamation of Arkhangelsk and the end of the Revolutionary Front, we are now presented with a potential opportunity to exploit. Many of the officers of the Front, high and low, are now under custody, scattered between various prison camps and detention facilities. It's been suggested by several of our senior officers that many of them will be amendable to service within our own armed forces in exchange for pardons given as part of the general amnesty. There's no denying that they have very useful talents, especially as it regards doctrines of deep battle and large-scale operations. However, their reliability, political and otherwise, has been called into question, and many within the government advise allowing them to serve even they should be... Even should they be so pardoned. Others consider them outright criminals and advise that they should be left in prison until such a time as rehabilitation can be considered, should it ever be. Regardless of a choice, a decision must be made. What should we do with them? I hate all these guys. Like, they want to kill us off. Get in prison, but you know what? I'd rather get RMXP. I'm going to make them rotten hell. But, for fun. I'm going to reward these guys too. That's nice. Look how weak our guys are. Because of the stupid decisions to just kill our own manpower off. Just to make the WRF just so flippin' difficult to fight. Oh, German intervention. Oh, please don't use nukes. Please don't use nukes. Screw you, Viaka. You wanted to surprise us with attacks? Yeah, go kill yourself. Alright. Yay! Oh, we got it all! Look at that. Nice. Beautiful. Yeah, screw you, Samara. Oh, I hate, I'm going to hate this war so much, too. Um, this war is going to suck hard. You want to that? Let's go ahead. Drown him in lead? Well, I don't know. We'll see. 
consolidate our territory. Our rapid gains of the new lands, whether through peace or wars, the left of the administration overextended. While we have theoretically control over a large, fairly chunk of the Western Russia, the fact is that there are so many pockets of thinner territory that operate freely, possibly even against Komi. We must rectify the situation now before we march against the rest of the warlords. More funding and manpower will be devoted to not only keeping the peace wherever, everywhere in our lands, but also to new regional administrations. With the increase of workers and money, the new administrations should be able to begin the process of truly consolidating these new lands, bringing them thoroughly under our control. Well, that's the idea. An entire another month before we get more manpower. That's so stupid. Uh, but it makes sense. I hate how it makes so much sense. Oh, we can really use that. But let's do this one first. Satisfy the peasantry. The majority of people in Russia are peasants. While many of us who still support us, there are also many who have been corrupted by reactionary propaganda. We must show the peasants that we are a benevolent force and not a specter that seeks to ruin their lives. We will accomplish this task by providing the peasants with modern equipment that we can so that their lives become easier. Furthermore, we'll ensure that the peasants have access to modern amenities and methods of communication, improving their standards of living, hopefully. These efforts will show the rural people of Russia that we only seek to better their lives, not cast them into heck. Well, at least we have the bonus against the front. That is nice. But, oh my goodness, can we please, for the love of God, just hurry this up. Please, 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 please. Six divisions is not going to be enough. I mean, we could still win. Don't get me wrong. We're still going to win. But, like... I don't want to be so aggravating sometimes, man. I'll be honest, it's aggravating fighting in the West here. After we finish the West, it gets pretty easy. But before, oh my goodness. Um, let's this one. Because we can do more equipment. Replenish the armory. Our recent wars left over our, has left our weapons supplies dangerously low. And it's clear that we need to restock or risk supply shortages. We must audit all the captured equipment and see what can be of use to us. Furthermore, we need to start up new weapons factories and restart the old ones so that we do not run out of ammo or rifles at a critical juncture. While this requires us to move our military to offensive posture for now, it is necessary so that we can succeed in conquering the warlords. And Samara's now coming for us. God flipping dang it. Well, at least we do have an equipment now, which is nice. Go with five, and then go with five there too. Get out immediately. We need you right now. Do we core stuff here? Oh, we might have. Nice. Um, and now a whole another month before that's all done and taken care of. I'm not going to like this war at all. Why do they have so much manpower? Jesus Christ! This one. Uh, civvies, millies, relocate the capital, ensure industrial effectiveness. In a conquest, we managed to seize control of a large amount of factories, all in varying states of readiness. While we've been able to get some of the, um, up, them up and running again, there's still many that need to be properly restored and restarted. We must focus our efforts on ensuring that these factories are not can only function, but function productively. We'll also ensure that these new factories have workers who understand the power of communism, as to prevent any saboteurs wrecking havoc. Oh, this is going to suck so hard. Oh my gosh, that is stupid. I hate this. I hate this so much. I mean, it's not fun. It's just not fun. You guys gotta keep these guys in place. You can, you can still win against them, but still. Like, this type of challenge is not fun. And we still win fairly and legitly, but it's... Great. Yeah, no. Are you kidding me? How fast can you move? Oh my god! Yeah, I'm sorry, but I'm going to have to use commands here because this is this is not fun. I said it before and I'll say it again every single time. It's just not fun. I will have to use commands. Won't I? Because look at this. Look how fast they're moving in. They don't even have, have air superiority, do they? Oh, they do? It's not fun. I don't like this. I really don't like this, man. We gotta rescue those divisions, because if we don't have those divisions, we're screwed. We are absolutely screwed. And not in a good way. At least we replenish the armory. Uh, industrial effectiveness. Oh, god dang it. I hate this so much. Break out. Break out. Come on. Move. Two days. Get us more manpower. For the love of god, get us more manpower. How did you lose here? How the heck did you lose? Break out for the love of God. You can do... Just break. Thank you. Jesus Christ. Why did it take that long? Ah, I'm sorry I'm complaining so much. I hate fighting in the, in the West here. Especially with not like... Either, either play Samara or the WRF. 
Those are those are easy to play. Those are super easy to play. This nation, I don't know why I chose this <laughs> this path. Ah, go in, go in, go in, go in, go in. We can mop up these other divisions. Hold, 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 hold the phone. You got phones, you gotta hold them. Yeah, giving these guys a hundred. 124,000 map hours is completely unfair and just not fun, man. Not cool. Not cool. Alright, let's keep going with that one. Yes, please. Anything else here? Scam for some good old looty booty. Um, go here, maybe? You might be able to win. Alright, well, that was a waste. Put you a hole and go right there. Well, realistically. You guys go there, you do that, and all that good stuff. You go here. Thank God we have manpower now. Thank the Lord. Holy crap. Alright. And then we look at the party. Well, the recent conquest, multiple people in the party have advocated for the relocation of the capital from Siktivka to Rykov. Well, Rykov is a more central location, which would allow us to govern easier. The fact of the matter remains that, we, that relocation of the party is a costly endeavor. We would have to stage such a relocation so that a government couldn't be wiped out in a single blow and the capital would be closer to our enemies. However, there are many who argue that despite the cost, the benefits of moving to Rykov would be immense in the long term. We must resolve this debate now before we must direct resources into more wars against the warlords. Fulfilling our promises. When we struck our deal on the front, an agreement was made to begin the process of integration once Vyatka, Vologda, and Gaini were handled. Now, with their military defeat, the town has come to begin reintegration. We will hardly expect for the front to follow through on their end, although there's only a few who believe that they will sell us out. In any case, let us reach out to the WRF to begin the process of integration. W what? What? That, that focus literally makes no sense. Agreement with the front. Well, we just we murdered the front, and I will murder them again if I have to. I don't want to, but we will, well, if we have to. The division wants to die here. Sounds good with us. Nice. If you can, if you, oh god, I hope there's not, there's probably going to be quite a few divisions down here. Yeah, yeah, look at that, already, immediately. Nice. Another division destroyed. Keep these guys in place. How are we doing over here? More millies. Are we really out of guns again? No, we got plenty enough. And artillery. Holy smokes. I do apologize for being ragey earlier. Like, it's just not fun sometimes. Just, as I said before, just, it's aggravating. It's so aggravating sometimes. It's possible to win. I just don't want to deal with it. Um, well, since we're here anyways, you guys are 40 combo with. Screw it. Make you guys 40 combo with. It's a little early to do this, but screw it. We need it. We need the, the firepower right now. The manpower, the firepower, any sort of power that we can get our hands on. Support equipment. You know what? Go down here. Cut them all off. Come on, get in there. Get in there. Yes, yes. Please do not get in a circle. Please, 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 please. There we go. Nitsi oh, that's where Nitsi Nagorod is. Oh, I didn't read that. We're going to build up his good head. Nice. We're going to build up his good head. And look at the party, of course. The Reich of Conference. Yeah, read that, please go ahead. Integrate the generals. Merge the bureaucracies. Heck no, black of plan. Yep. It seems that our worst nightmare is coming to pass. The WRF has declined our efforts to offer integration. It's obviously the front seeks to conquer Komi, gaining power in the process, as there's no other reason for them to suddenly decide to turn against us, their allies, thankfully. We have a backup plan. War with the front. We must quickly begin to move our troops into position so that we are ready to destroy the traitors to the north, of course. We must also attempt to keep these actions as secret as possible so that they cannot properly respond to our military. The armies of the front may be experienced, but with luck, we can destroy this upstart military junta before it destroys us. Follow it up with. Cut the radio lines. Since we uh, were the closest nation to the WRRF, 
They relied upon radio lines and networks for communications for, to, for the outside world. Let us cut these lines, depriving them of this network. Such an action would undoubtedly confuse them, as a sudden vanishing of combat contact tends to do, leaving them scrambling at the critical juncture. Furthermore, it seems that some of their border forces relied on our networks to reach our Kongolsk, so a destruction of this contact will allow us to assault the border, leaving the soldiers unable to get in contact with the superior officers, which prevents our troops from meeting the opposition until we have advanced further into the country. And taking down the despots. The WRF, despite their noble fight against the Germans, have proven to be nothing more than revisionists. If they're allowed to succeed, Russia will come or become nothing more than a military junta backed by the image of communism. We must declare war and put an end to this farce of communism before they put an end to us, forward soldiers. And then, of course, incorporate our Kongolsk. Despite the attempts at the front, uh, the Germans were able to successfully bomb the far north very heavily. Many of the roads and railroads are in ruins, and the towns and cities need to be rebuilt in order to be of, in, of any use. It is therefore prudent that we will send economic aid northwards. This economic aid will be focused on the Arkhangelsk Oblast, as it has the most potential for development, and was also bombed the most. We shall build new factories, restore the railroads, and modernize the houses. This economic development should allow for the north to quickly become a productive part of the front, or the country, allowing us for us to have a stronger economic base, as well as move against the rest of the warlords. I don't understand. I do not understand why. And I, I guess I sort of do. But why is this all the way here at the bottom? If we're doing the road Arkhangelsk, and we're doing icy reception, watching our rear, it makes somewhat, but... It feels so constrained. It feels really constrained doing that stuff. Too constrained. A new capital. Um, uh, the recent victories allowed us to strengthen our presence in the West Russia and bring order to the distant territories that were copped by anarchy and tyranny right after the departure of their army. As more and more hostile territories are pacified and transferred under the protection of the Soviet power, we're now able to reconsider our position in the region. And proposals are coming from various officials to relocate our residence of Zarykov, or as it was known under the country revolutionary leadership, Vyatka. The provisional capital Siktivkar, now purged out of bourgeois and fascist elements that overwhelmed the city in the later years, has served the Soviet government well and its capabilities and came as a great aid in the more desperate times. But as our outside situation plays more into our favor, we have an opportunity and move our capital to the central region of West Russia, thus allowing to entrench ourselves in a more comfortable position. Eh, I like stability. And I usually choose that one just because it's easy, and I like it. Keep going all around him. Godlish. I do apologize for complaining so much earlier, but it just it's so frustrating. It's just so aggravating doing this. Um but we won. Uh and the ROA. Uh the ROA are nothing but collaborators. They may speak of reunifying Russia and freeing it from the communism, but the fact remains that they willingly sided with the people who caused this era of warlordism. The time has come to destroy Vlasov's ilk once and for all, so Russia can be free from the traitors. Strike the separatists. Close to rivals. Oh. Though Russia remains suspended in anarchy, it is through teamwork that we will escape this dreadful era. Warlords from all different backgrounds await our message. Some may wish for a painful demise, others may seek to form a friendship. Others may only want to maintain a state of peace. Perhaps we can establish diplomatic relations with the other Russian powers and see how they're holding up. When our potential most valuable allies lay on the other side of Europe, our only option is to extend our influence into Russia itself. Uh, the Republic of Tatarstan is yet another example of how separatism strikes at the worst possible moment. While they existed as it, the Tatar uh, Tatar ASSR in the front. They revolted as the front collapsed, weakening it even more. Knowing this, it is fairly obvious that they have no interest in peacefully rejoining a communist Russia, therefore leaving us with one option, invasion. We shall strike against these separatists and bring them back under our fold. Oh, you want to do this? Please go ahead. Yeah, boom, boom, boom. Boom, boom, boom. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah, I don't like that. Just... I don't like this. I don't like this focus tree, man. The West is ours. Despite all the odds that stacked against us, we have managed to bring all of West Russia under one banner, a feat not seen since the 50s. However, our conquests will glorious were swift, and we must devote our energies towards consolidating our new lands. We must ensure that Permis is courage clean in the Brotherhood, that the last ROA soldiers are captured, and most importantly, we must end the lawlessness present in our lands. It'll be a difficult task, but one that is necessary, as we cannot afford our state to be on the brink of total anarchy. Survey the Republic? Yeah, oh, that's going to be important, yeah. Uh, if we're to reunite Russia... We need to have access to the full potential of our territory, which is something we lack of as of now. While there are some resistance against us, the primary problem is that we lack knowledge on what our resources are and where we can get new resources. Even with us piecing together, piecing together everything we have, there are still large swaths of our lands that we know nothing about. The time has come for us to conduct a full survey of West Russia. This survey will conclude the city so we can fully understand what needs to be rebuilt, and the countryside so we can require access to new resources. It may take time, but we need it in order to move forward and reunite Russia. Oh, what the heck? 
Who took my treasure? God dang it. Well, let time go on then. Oh, 20, 20 and 20, it's not bad. Raise the Red Banner. Most of our new lands are not run by commies and shows. There are a fair amount of apprehension towards the government, as people believe that will collapse like the Soviet Union of old. We must spread propaganda to inform the people that it was not communism innate weakness that had ruined Russia, but the insidious Germans who sought to annihilate us. Furthermore, we must try to encourage people to show pride in the Soviet Union, after all. It was under the Soviet Union that there was peace, not the monarchist or the Russian Republic. We shall raise the Red Banner of Communism in every village and town so the people will see that we've returned to liberate all. Go off, these guys. It's sad that we only have seven divisions, which sucks, but you know what? I'd rather have them than nothing else. And prepare our industry. I have to get some more support coming, too. Happy 65, everybody. It's going to be honestly kind of painful getting all this industry stuff done. Well, they increase access to resources. Combined with our new conquests, the time to come to expand our new industri expand our industrial output. Firstly, we must integrate the Kubishev industry into our home. Their output must be factored into our planning and industrial production. Secondarily, we must begin to, begin to build new factories in our lands. Our access to new resources allows for our industry to diversify, letting us produce different products. With the combination of Kubishev industry and new factories, we can be prepared for future wars and we can support the industrial workers, which is a core part of our mandate. Oh, absolutely. I'll get way more arty than that. That's not not nearly enough. Just go and beat the crap out of him if you can. I'll get more loot and maybe do more agricultural methods. Yay! 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 I just I wanted to beat them up, but whatever. Oh, peace conference is over. Oh boy. Well, yep, Onega's next. Obviously, we don't have a lot of divisions. Oh my gosh, look at that manpower. That's so nice. Can't add any more. Oh, that sucks. Oh, that really sucks. Alright, so we can close out of that one and reunification of Russia. Once this focus, of course, is finished, then we'll do that. And there we go. That should be everything there. So, let's... I did not plan on doing this right now. Actually, I did not plan on doing this at all. The Soviet Republic of Western Russia unifies West Russia. Our energy or strength is within the party. We don't have a lot, but we can do really well there. So, let's do that and then do this. Yes, please. But, let's begin with what? Oh, we finish off Onega first. Oh, boy. But, we'll do all this stuff as well. But, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like, subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below. And, I'll see you tomorrow when we invade Onega. And, as well as the Republic of Finland. Thanks for watching. Have a tremendous, tremendous, tremendous rest of your day.